today on Mother Mayhem. There is no such thing as the right way to do the holidays or the wrong way to do the holidays. The only thing that's true here is that there is a right way for you to do the holidays and there is a wrong way for you to do the holidays. Welcome back to Mother Mayhem, the Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Podcast for Daughters. I'm your host, Heather Gray. And when I was thinking of names for this show, I went back and forth on the mayhem part of it. It felt sensationalizing and maybe a little too clickbaity, for lack of a better word. But as we've heard on previous episodes, narcissistic moms are exceptional at creating mayhem during important events. We've covered how they can create havoc at weddings and funerals alike. Weddings, funerals, and important events rile up narcissists like nobody's business. So of course they are all over the place and spinning out during the holidays. And that's what we're talking about today. Managing the mayhem that narcissistic moms cause when it comes to the holidays. Mayhem may indeed be a little bit dramatic for a, of a description, but my experience tells me it's also a little bit accurate. The drama and chaos your mothers can bring to your holidays is pretty significant. Externally, she can create all kinds of scenes and all kinds of drama and involve all kinds of people, but also internally, all of this can create so many feelings. As you all begin to contemplate this holiday season and think about what the holidays have meant for you in the past, I know that a lot of you are going to be feeling deep grief and deep pain. I often hear in my very first sessions with women that they hate Christmas or they just want to skip the holidays altogether. They feel it that profoundly that it can be February and I'll be hearing how much they're dreading the next Christmas. For many of you, the holidays are always known to come with a side of grief. You grieve the holidays you've wanted and never had. Your bodies might tense and stiffen as you recall the really awful exchanges that have occurred with your mom in previous years. And you might feel like you can never get through a holiday season without being a gigantic disappointment to your mom, no matter what you do. This is a time of year when our choices start to feel like contests. Your mom might make you feel like you have to choose between you or your in-laws. She likely makes you feel like no choice is the right choice. No matter how much time you spend with her, it's never enough time. But also during the holidays, your mom isn't the only one who comes to you with expectations. Friends, extended family, colleagues, everyone probably wants a piece of you at this time of year. It certainly feels like that for me sometimes. And as we know for all of you daughters, this pressure can be really, really brutal. Your people-pleasing impulses probably go into overdrive, and then your inner critics end up getting even louder and louder when you realize it is all entirely set up to fail and there is no possible way you can please everyone. And this, my friends, is what we call a good old-fashioned clusterfuck. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Welcome to my world, right? That's why I'm here, and I'm hoping to help all of you think this through. We have a couple of listener questions that I'm going to get to a little later in the show, but I want to first walk you through some things. First of all, I want to be crystal clear here. You're not going crazy. It's not your imagination. Narcissists really do get worse, act worse, and become more impossible during the holidays. Because here's what you need to remember. Narcissists struggle with empathy and genuine connection. Their biggest impairments are their inability to do relationships. And during the holidays, even a narcissist knows that holidays become more and more about relationships. So their failings, their sensitivities, 
and their vulnerability are all too apparent to them. So then they do what narcissists do. They lean on their learned behaviors and they work to muddle through. And as we know, their learned behaviors are most usually the storage chest of manipulative tactics that they previously used in the past to successfully get their needs met. Their needs are often going to center around how they want you to be, how they want you to speak, how they want you to act around them and towards them. And they're going to hold those expectations for everyone around you too. So you're going to find that they're looking at your husbands, your partners, your kids, anyone else in the room in these holiday gatherings for how those people treat them, act towards them, or prioritize them, or don't prioritize them. And we know that your moms have this constant need for validation and control. The holidays are just going to escalate all of this. It's like narcissism on steroids. <laughs> if we're going to really be honest about what this is and what this feels like, your mom needs and demands constant attention and validation. She is going to see the focus shifting away from her in even the slightest way. And when she doesn't receive that attention she craves, she becomes more and more likely to act out. You've heard me say this before. But a narcissist's greatest fear is to not be thought of or considered at all. In that absence of whatever they deem to be positive attention, your moms are likely going to choose behaviors to garner negative attention. And I'm reminded a little bit here as I'm saying this of fatal attraction. So you can insert your best I'm not going to be ignored, Dan, impersonation. <laughs> I don't even know what I was thinking doing that. I can't imperson impersonate Glenn Close to save my life. I should have known better, <laughs> better than to try. Anyway, I digress. Holiday, they're going to be involving social gatherings. Families and friends are interacting. Your, for your moms and for you, quite honestly, this is going to be terrifying because they fear exposure, that others are going to see through their facade, others are going to see their true nature, and to counteract this fear, they often become overly controlling and overly critical, hence the whole narcissism on steroids thing. They're trying to maintain their image, and they are desperate to preserve their narrative. And social media reminds us all too often that hurt people hurt people. And we're going to see this with your moms. People don't develop narcissism in a vacuum. Often narcissism is the result of early childhood or trauma wounds that your mom experienced in her own impressionable years when growing up. So just as you're getting stirred up by the holidays, your mom is going to get stirred up by them too. She's probably remembering painful emotional experiences, but then she lacks the capacity to process those memories in any kind of healthy or productive way. As a result, her negative behavior ends up intensifying and making us all crazy. And I tell you this not to excuse your mother or rid her of her responsibility, but to remind all of you that none of this None of what she does, says, doesn't do, or doesn't say is about you. It has nothing to do with you. And there's nothing you can do or say that's going to guarantee that she not act out, not be disappointed, or not create drama. I really need you to hear me on this. Really stop and listen. You cannot prevent your mom from acting out. You can't guarantee her happiness with you, and you can't control whether or not she keeps her shit together. She makes you think that you have that kind of power, but I promise you, you don't. Your challenge here is to think about and consider yourself. And I know that even as I say this, it probably sounds like a foreign language to all of you when I say it. I want to remind you 
of what it's like for all of you daughters during the holidays. Because see, for most of us, the holidays often come with some vision of how it's supposed to be. Holiday movies and television ads, they've brainwashed into expecting this season of joy, togetherness, and love. And all of it, it's just supposed to be there, waiting for us. So easy, so accessible. But for all of you, though, and for a lot of other people not even dealing with narcissists, if we're going to be honest, those expectations are rarely met, if they ever were. And if you were so lucky to have that kind of illusion of joy, family, and togetherness, it often comes at a really high cost when your mom is a narcissist. More often than not, your holidays were filled with manipulation, criticism, emotional neglect. There's this stark contrast between what you hope for and what you experience, and it's all really deeply distressing. And that doesn't ever change just because we're just grown-up kids now. As adults, you're going to carry the memories of holidays past with that pressure for holidays present. And it can feel sometimes, I imagine, like the walls are caving in, like you can never do anything right, or that you can never have the kind of holiday you actually want. Because heck, after a lifetime of trying to be and do whatever your mother wanted for the holidays, you likely have no freaking clue what you even would want for yourself for your own holidays. Okay, okay. I have to slow myself down for a second. I think I'm talking really fast and I'm thinking a mile a minute, so I need to take it down a notch. For this next piece, I want all of you to, to pause this and grab a piece of paper. Send yourself a text or send yourself a note. If I was doing all of this perfectly for you, I would be crafting a journal exercise right now for each of you with the questions that I want to pose. But I have to be really honest with you. I just don't have time to do that this week. I'm going to put these questions in the show notes for you. But your best bet here right now, knowing me, is to pause the podcast, get a notebook or your note-taking app ready, and I really want you to consider this question. It's going to feel strange and unfamiliar, but I want you to try to do it anyway. Here goes. If you could create the perfect holiday for yourself, with all things being equal, after all, your mom is always going to be a narcissist, what is the holiday you would design for yourself? Who would you need to be to have that kind of holiday? And what would you have to do to preserve that kind of holiday? I want each of you listening to really give this some serious consideration and thought. It's okay to listen to this episode through and then you can go back to it if you want to. But I really think it's important that you take the time to do this journal entry. If you don't have the time now, put a note in your calendar and schedule for yourself when you're going to give this some thought. And again, I will put the question in the show notes. But just to quickly repeat it for you here. If you could create the perfect holiday for yourself with all things being equal, because again, remember, your mom's always going to be a narcissist. What is the holiday you would design for yourself? Who would you need to be to have that kind of holiday? And what would you have to do to preserve that kind of holiday for yourselves? Again, remember, podcasts can be paused. You can go back. You can repeat that. But I really do think it's worth paying some time and attention on this. And the reason why I want you to pause and think about this is that all of you have so much stacked against you right now when it comes to managing the holidays without feeling triggered, dysregulated, or stressed. Because holidays are going to trigger something that I guess I call emotional flashbacks, 
Some of you might know about actual flashbacks that can come with trauma, but what I'm talking about when I talk about emotional flashbacks, I'm more talking about how sights and sounds or smells of the holidays can bring back memories of painful moments, and that can make it really hard to be present in the moment. So just talking about the holidays a month or so before they even begin can even bring you to this place of remembering the past incidences of emotional abuse or manipulation. And it can be really hard to imagine finding or preserving your peace. And right about now, we know this all too well, but during the holidays, society emphasizes family, love, togetherness. And for you daughters of narcissistic mothers, This can be a really painful reminder of what you lack, of what you don't have, of what you never had, a genuine, loving family connection. And this sense of loss, of grief, of invalidation, of not having your experiences acknowledged can intensify those feelings of loneliness and sadness. Most of you probably feel this overwhelming sense of guilt and obligation to spend time with your mom and the rest of the family during the holidays, no matter how dysfunctional they are. Others of you know that narcissists actually can even gatekeep people. I'm going to be doing a whole episode on this at some point. But what I'm talking about here when I say this is that your mom might create situations where you can't see people you love unless you also see her. She might make your father choose sides. She might keep your siblings from you. She might keep ailing grandparents or other disabled people from you. The holidays are prime opportunities, too, for those smear campaigns to be unleashed. You may be mentally preparing yourself for the lies and the insinuations your mom is going to make about you to loved ones in an attempt to keep you in check. This obligation, and you combine it with the anticipation of potential emotional abuse, it can create this constant buzzing or constant state of anxiety, and it can feel oftentimes like you're walking on eggshells afraid of setting off this negative chain reaction of a shit show. So behind every one of you dreading the holidays, it's all of this and more that you're all feeling burdened by. I really do get it. Here's what I want you to know next. There is no such thing as the right way to do the holidays or the wrong way to do the holidays. The only thing that's true here is that there is a right way for you to do the holidays, and there is a wrong way for you to do the holidays. I know what you're thinking. Come again? And it must sound, again, like I'm back in that foreign language. I know you're used to making decisions around your holidays by following that path of least resistance or doing whatever causes the least amount of conflict or trauma drama. But as you all know way too well, the problem with doing this is that you dread the holidays. You end up having trouble relaxing in your body and you struggle with really being present. Making memories is really hard when you can't sit still in your body. Being present for your kids feels really impossible when you're scanning for the next threat, the next reaction, the next part of the shit show. So your body ends up getting caught in fight, flight, or freeze. And as a result, you end up moving through the holidays in the passenger seat of your life, reacting to whatever your mom and her drama has handed you this time. Once you decide, this doesn't work for me. This way of moving through the holidays doesn't work for me. I don't choose this. I want the holidays to be different for myself and my family. Everything starts to open up a little bit more for you. The way this works is that as your mother, or quite frankly, anyone else starts to ask 
something of you when it comes to the holidays, you can reflect back on the journal entry, on the questions that I asked you about how you want your holiday to go, how you want to feel inside the moments of your holiday. And then as you decide and make decisions about the holidays, you can make your decisions from that place. I said in my journal entry that I wanted X, Y, Z. I wanted to feel A, B, C. I wanted to experience D, E, F. My next door neighbor has asked me if I want an A, B, C. Does that align with what I said I wanted for myself? My mother has requested that we X, Y, Z. Does that align with what I have described for myself an ideal holiday would look like? You make decisions about how your holidays go from the place of whether or not they align with what you wrote for yourself. That's why that journal entry is so important. And I really want you spending time thinking about your ideal holiday because then you can make plans from that place. And I know that as I do this, there's no way I can tackle every holiday hypothetical in just this episode, because if we know anything, we know that narcissistic moms are pretty good at coming up with all kinds of scenarios and situations that are entirely unique to them. What I am going to do is run down some listener-submitted questions, and as I share my responses with you, I want you to get a sense of how I'm encouraging you to think about your holidays this year how you're going to walk through your own decision-making, your own boundary setting, and your own limits on how the holiday season's going to go. It's about getting you to think differently so you start making different decisions. Okay, here we go. First up, we have Allie. Here's what Allie has to say. With the holidays coming up, I always get a lot of anxiety. I'm almost 40 years old and I still have trouble discussing my plans with my mom. I think about all of the tips that I've learned from therapy and books, but yet it's hard to ignore the dread that keeps building up. I've been in a long distance relationship for almost two years. I travel a lot to be with my boyfriend as I have a remote job and I prefer the city he lives in so much more. I'm extremely happy and in a great place in my life after leaving a marriage I was unhappy in for almost 10 years prior to my current relationship. The past few years, I've spent all of the holidays at home with my mom and some of her family. This year, I'm going to spend Thanksgiving with my boyfriend and his family. It's what I want to do, just to make clear he isn't pressuring me or begging me to, and honestly, I don't want to spend it with my mom. I'm going to tell her soon that this is my plan, but I'm having so much anxiety. When I was married, I used to spend every other year with her, and it was something she just had to accept. She doesn't have a lot of friends or a big family, and since I've been divorced, she has the expectation that I will be with her now. Even when I was married, I dreaded the holidays for the guilt trips if I wasn't spending enough time, according to her, with her and her family. She once told me, Christmas Day is my day with you. I just want to spend the holidays with my significant other. I can't be my true self around my mom, so spending the holidays with her just isn't enjoyable any longer at this point in my life. She's single, though, so I start ending up feeling guilty. The way she reprimands me at times makes me feel like I'm 12 years old asking to go to a sleepover at a friend's house. I feel like it shouldn't be this difficult at my age. Hopefully you can cover something along these lines with the holidays approaching. Again, thank you for your podcast and all of your insights. I'm grateful. Oh, Allie, <laughs> you just spoke of what the holidays can be like and feel like for so many of the women listening in on our chat today. We can be six or we can be 60 and still our moms can have the ability to make us feel so young so small and so childlike when they're trying to control the outcome of a situation. Here, your mom has this learned pattern of behavior that's allowed her 
to get her way for the holidays. You mentioned that you're being married as the thing that she just had to accept. I would argue that somehow being married was something you yourself decided was a good enough reason to disappoint her for, because I know a lot of daughters who married or not still fall prey to leaning on their mother's needs and desires. So I would argue here that the challenge is to give yourself the same permission to disappoint her even though you aren't married. Sure, you have a boyfriend, but you could easily decide you want to spend the holiday with a good friend, that you want to use the time off to travel alone, or that you want to volunteer. Anything you want to do, any way you want to spend your time, is a good enough reason to not spend it with her. These kind of situations I like to tackle head on. So here's how I would do it. Mom, the holidays are coming up. I imagine you might be assuming that we're spending Thanksgiving and Christmas together. I want you to know that I've decided that I will be spending the holidays with my boyfriend this year. We're going to be doing Thanksgiving and Christmas together with his family. I wanted you to know because I know that traditionally you think of the holidays as days for you and me, but this year I really want to be where he lives. I love that area so much and my work is making it so easy. Now, as her daughter, you are used to defining the right thing to do by what she decides the right thing to do is. I would encourage you to change the measuring stick of the right thing to do by what is right for you and what is right with you. Hold yourself accountable when you go right or left of your center, not hers. Let your conscience kick in when you aren't choosing what you want. And when you're not doing what feels good for you, that's when your conscience should kick in, not when you're not doing what she wants. Instead of being worried about her reaction or that she's going to be upset, I would just expect it. And it might go something like this, mom, you're right. This isn't like me. I get it. It feels new for me too. After all, I know that you don't have a lot of other options in your life to spend the holidays with. I'm sad for you about that, but I really want this for myself. And if I don't choose it, I'm only going to resent myself later for it. It's a good idea to come to the conversation prepared for what you are willing to do with her around the holidays and for the holidays. How much time are you going to make for her? That's not to say in any way, Allie, that you must spend time with your mom. But if you know what your plan B is and how you do wish to spend time with her, you can tell her. So it can sound something like, I was hoping that perhaps the weekend before we could make a nice meal together. Or how about when I come back from seeing my boyfriend and his family, we make plans to X, Y, or Z. If your mom in this situation starts to become belligerent, she starts name calling, she guilt trips. One of the ways you can manage this is to think about it this way. Mom, of course you get to be sad and mad about this. My changing the holidays for myself changes the holidays for you. I get that that makes you mad and I understand your disappointment. The words you're choosing right now are mean, judgmental, and unkind. I understand you're mad, but we're going to further disrupt the holidays if this conversation continues. If she challenges you on that, be clear. Something like, Mom, I love you. I know this is hard for you, but I am not going to listen to you speak to me this way. I am leaving or I'm ending this conversation. I will check in with you in a few days to see if you're calmer and perhaps ready then to plan our time together. If she escalates, Allie, and if she tells you, never mind the holidays, she'll just be alone. Try something like, I understand why you would want to make that choice. I really wish you wouldn't. I do think we can create a nice holiday for ourselves, even if it's different. But if you decide you don't want to see me, I understand, and I hope you plan something nice for yourself. 
See, if she threatens not to see you or talk to you during the holidays, let her. Don't let yourself feel guilty. She had a lot of choices, and she chose that one. And after that, you don't owe her anything, Allie. But if you do feel a desire to try one more time with her, something that you can try is you can always check in with her like a week before and say, I know you were mad when you canceled our having any holiday time together. Is this still your decision? If she says yes, offer understanding, wish her a nice holiday. Don't get emotional about it. Stay incredibly matter of fact. She may grab at one of her other manipulative tools. I just wouldn't engage here. It's going to take your body a second to catch up with your mind and your heart on this. And that's okay. You want to work on grounding. You want to work on calming your body, deep breathing, muscle relaxation. You are doing something different here. So your body's going to end up getting kicked into fight, flight, or freeze. That doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. You're just doing something different. You want to reassure your body. It's okay. I'm okay. I've got this. We've got this. Remind yourself that you were choosing you and that you deserve a holiday by your own design. Also, Allie, it's probably going to be a good idea here if you keep listening in on the other questions coming and my answers to those too, because I have a feeling they'll give you more information. Next up, we have Renee. Renee asks, Every single year, I dread the holidays because I know my mother is going to make it all about her. Nothing I do is ever good enough, no matter how much money I spend or how much effort I put in, it's always dismissed, and she doesn't even pretend to appreciate it anymore. I thought things would change when I had my sons, who are now 12 and 15, and it would be all about them. But nope, still, it's all about her. Now she just has two more people that she's emotionally manipulating into catering to her. She insists on spending the night at my home on Christmas Eve to control who is at our house, decides what food we make, even though my son and I have food allergies that prevent us from eating what she wants, and needs to see every single gift that is open so she can compare it to what she received. She makes comments about the cost of things and says we spend too much money on our children and that we're wasting our money. The expectation is that I will run myself ragged for the few days and cater to her every need with little to no time to sit and enjoy the holiday with my own children or just take any moment longer than a beat. I want to look forward to the holidays with my family and my children. However, I am always left feeling sad, angry, and wishing for them to just be over so I can regain control over my home. My husband, for years, was oblivious to all of this, until recently when I started having some conflicts with my mom about how she was manipulating my boys, and I've been putting up some pretty clear boundaries. He's much more aware now and has no problem being direct with her about the way she treats me. Okay, Renee, here it goes. Your mom has this learned pattern of behavior, because in previous years, it worked. I wonder if as you hear your story reflected back for you here, if you can hear all of the anxiety your mom holds about how important she is to everyone. She's gauging everyone by how their reaction to her happens. But what you're also seeing is that even if you cater to her every move, she still wields power trying to get you to all dance and jump at her command. She's done these things because they've worked. And like so many mama bears before you, now that you have your own kids, what you used to make semi-palatable for yourself just doesn't work for you at all anymore. You don't want your mom manipulating your kids the way she's manipulated you. And now, as a result, you're willing to move differently in response to her. 
she has this learned pattern of behavior and she's used to your learned pattern response here. You are the one doing the changing. You are changing your pattern response here. Here's how I would think about tackling it. I don't know what your food allergies are, but let's just say it's gluten and nuts because that's kind of popular. <laughs> so you might say something like, Hey, mom, you know the deal with my family. I can't have gluten and Sam can't have nuts. I know you like to have Christmas cookies and baked goods around you during the holidays, but I've decided that this year I really want to only have food that all of us can have. I'm not going to be serving food that isn't friendly to our food allergies or preferences. I know your cookie tradition is important to you, so I wanted to give you the heads up about that. I know that it might interrupt your own holiday experience a bit, and I wanted you to be prepared in case you decided you wanted to go somewhere else that isn't encumbered by specialty or dietary needs. Now, this is my favorite, one of my favorite, I have a lot of favorite ways, but this is one of my favorite ways of boundary setting. Instead of having to be all armored up, because armor, when we're all armored up, we're saying, you can't do this, you can't do that. So-and-so is going to be unacceptable to me. You can say this for the holiday season. I have decided X, Y, Z. I totally get you might not want to come. If it were at someone else's house, we wouldn't have this freedom, but it's our house. And I realize I can make our own rules. I totally understand if you prefer to opt out. I'm just choosing not to be left out of the holiday food I can't enjoy. This boundary setting works for any of you. You're just swapping out the dietary restrictions with any decisions that you have made for the holiday, and you just want to say, I have decided this. It's okay if you don't want to come. I wanted you to know so you could decide for yourself. In fact, Renee, and I'm sure this is going to make you a little bit nervous here, but for the record, it is also okay to tell your mom, I have decided that I would like Christmas Eve and Christmas morning to be alone with just my little family. We're going to be having a meal that suits our dietary needs. And in the morning, we're all going to do presents together. You, of course, are welcome to come late morning for a Christmas brunch. But I understand if you would like to make other plans. We know your mom's going to make a noise and she's going to make a fuss, but it's okay to say, Mom, I know you don't get it, but I just want a small, no-fuss holiday with just my husband and kids. I know that's not your thing, and I know you don't get it. That's okay. We understand. Let me know if you would like to come later. That way you're managing the whole gift-giving thing by avoiding it in a way but also, I imagine, having one of your dream holiday Christmas mornings. The point here is we want you to keep it matter of fact. Just the facts, ma'am. We've decided this. We understand it might not be your thing, but you are still welcome to come after. You, of course, don't have to choose this, but it's important that you and everyone listening know that you have the choice to choose something just like that. That way, if you opt out of the option and your mom comes and does her gift-giving commentary and wails on and on about the food, you can remember that this is no longer about something happening to you. She isn't happening to you. You had the choice not to include her, and you decided that your truth, you would rather be there. You would rather have her there. You would rather avoid the conflict, and you would rather keep the peace. Now, I, as I hear myself say this out loud, I know it sounds like I'm being sarcastic here. I'm not saying this sarcastically. So many of the questions and letters I get about moms is how they make you feel trapped. They make all of you feel so incredibly trapped. As soon as you think through setting a boundary for yourself and you opt out of not doing so, your mom is no longer someone or something happening to you. 
that ceases to be the story. You, in control of yourself, knew what to expect, knew how it would go, and you opted to go with the plan in front of you anyway. That awareness is how you stay regulated and non-reactive when she pulls her shit. It isn't about you. You knew what she would say. You knew what she would do if she was able to be there. It couldn't possibly be about you. It was always going to be about her. And you disengage and you stay regulated by reminding of yourselves of that. That kind of thinking might just be what you need to manage her petty money comments or her other gift-giving comments. I would work on not giving those comments attention or energy. If you can, just ignore that they're even being said. If your mom acknowledges your silence or your lack of attention to those comments, just say, I know you think we spend too much money at this time of year, but honestly, these kids of ours, they're great. They've been working so hard and doing so well, and I just love celebrating them and celebrating us. It's okay with me, mom, that you disagree. I see all kinds of people spend all kinds of money on all kinds of things that I would never buy, so I get it. But you know what? We only have 18 Christmases with these kids. So if they get spoiled 18 times in their lives, I'm okay with that. I just love them that much. Your mom gets to disagree with how much you spend on your kids, and you get to be unapologetic as fuck about it too. So just stop apologizing, everyone. You don't have to apologize. I know you disagree. But I love this choice I just made. I know you don't think my kids deserve this. I totally do. And I cannot wait to watch them play with it. Just stop apologizing. Maybe the mantra for the holiday season is going to be be unapologetic as fuck. (laughs) Okay, next up we have Elaine. Have you guys by any chance caught on yet, by the way? Everyone on today's show is a character from Allie McBeal. Oh, God, I love that show. And damn, damn, damn Robert Downey Jr. for relapsing because I never got my happy ending. I wanted Allie and Larry walking off into the sunset so badly. Oh, man, that one hurt. Um, I have forgiven him, though. After all, my husband still knows that he's my whole past. <laughs> oh, my God, the shit that comes out of my mouth. Okay, Elaine is asking, I think we should discuss how they have to have any attention on them. And I remember when I was little being all excited for Christmas. My mom would threaten not to go to the family gathering because she didn't have anything to wear and she always had to start some kind of negative drama. First of all, Elaine, I have to tell you really honestly, my heart kind of leapt when I got your note in your message because you said we. I really love how all of you are starting to take ownership of this community of ours And thinking about it as a we, it really meant so much to me. Just reading the simple question, even though the answer isn't entirely simple. So here goes. As we know, these kinds of times, they're going to be triggering for narcissistic moms. And narcissistic moms don't have the tools, they don't have the strategies, and they don't have the awareness to self-regulate. So we have to regulate our responses to them. And I think you probably found some examples of how to do that when I was talking to Allie and Renee. But let me also say here, your mom can of course be looking for attention. That doesn't mean we have to give it to her. The theme in my feedback, if you guys are really hearing me today, and I so hope you are, is that we want everybody to stay calm, stay neutral, and stay matter of fact. If she's going on and on about not having the right clothes to wear, you can say, Mom, you always look lovely. I think what you're wearing is fine, but if you want to change, I totally understand. We can meet you there. I say the meet you there part so that you don't allow your mom and her drama to make you late for whatever it is you're supposed to be doing or wherever you're supposed to be. Remember, we're giving your mom choices and then we're letting her know what her choices are based on her response. 
So if she's going on and on and she doesn't choose to stay, but is still anxious about leaving, you say, I see this is hard for you. I think you should take a minute to get yourself together. I'm going to get going and I'm going to take the kids to Aunt Mary's. I hope you're going to meet us there. Because remember here, most of you, everyone knows who your mom is during the holidays. They know how she is. Her behavior, whether or not she's late, whether or not she's complaining or crying, that's not a reflection on you. Everyone knows by this time what to expect of her. She's a narcissist with everyone, so everyone knows what the deal is. Your mom might likely say right out loud (laughs) that she's not getting enough attention, that no one is talking to her. Just acknowledge her words. Yes, I know you wish you had more people around you right now. Everyone's excited to have Zach home from college, and the little ones are so fun to look at and watch at this time of year. Betty just flew in, and we don't get to see her. If it's too hard to watch, maybe you need to find a quiet spot in the house and just take a breather for a second. You don't want to argue with your mom. You don't want to call her out on her behavior, and you want to keep your attention towards her neutral. She wants your positive attention. She wants that most of all. But remember what I said earlier, if she doesn't get it, if she can't get it, she's going to settle for negative attention. She'll cause that huge scene because it's right up her alley. Don't give it to her. Keep it flat, plain, neutral, matter of fact. Work on that and think that through a little bit. And I, I think you'll find some resolution there. Georgia asks, How can I set limits on how much stuff she gives my kids? She doesn't listen to anything I say, and honestly, we give most of it away. How do we set limits when we need to leave? How can I do activities with my sister without my mom making me feel guilty for not including her? Okay, Georgia, thank you so much for this. Your question actually reminds me of what was probably one of my best slash nuttiest Christmases ever. One Thanksgiving when we were kids, my grandmother gave my sister and I this Toys R Us catalog. I don't know. Am I I dating myself already with the Toys R Us catalog? I don't know. But in any case, she told us to circle what we wanted for Christmas. Imagine the jackpot. (laughs) We thought we landed when my grandmother went out and like got us every gosh darn thing that we had circled because we just like we went on wild somebody hands you a catalog and says oh circle the things you like for christmas you circle everything you like you don't think about rationing it you don't think about just keeping it to your favorites you're like "Ooh, i like that Ooh, i like that oh my gosh it was (laughs) it was the best honestly but also man oh man did that make my dad mad (laughs) That made him so mad. And here's what this points out to us. Gift giving and the values attached around money are so incredibly personal and they're so individual. So for narcissists, they're just another tool that they use to control the relationships and how people respond to them. Unfortunately for them, The gifts they give rarely give them the relationships they want. Now, I know plenty of people who use narcissists for their gifts as well. For the most part, though, narcissists aren't genuinely warm. They have an energy about them that actually often repels people away. And no matter what they do, they will never be as close to people as they want to be. When it comes to this gift-giving thing with narcissists, I always like to ask, is this the hill you're willing to die on? Because we have to be honest here, narcissists are no narcissists. A lot comes up for all of us when it comes to gift-giving. We put pressure on ourselves to get the right things. We stress about money going out. We want people to feel loved. We want to feel loved ourselves. This shit is really messy for all of us. When we have toxic people and narcissists in our lives, 
It's easy to jump on the boundary bandwagon, but we have to be honest with ourselves. We all have well-meaning people who make us cringe and groan with their gift-giving behavior, and the holidays often become a season of sucking that up. So given that how I know it's so messy for everyone, I do tend to let narcissists off the hook and go back to not giving it too much energy or attention. I do try to recommend going neutral as much as possible, but setting the boundary on what the actual value is. If your mom is giving shit tons of presents to your kids, but there are other kids who don't belong to her, so she's not giving them a ton of presents, you can tell your mom that you've taken some of the gifts that she had given the kids out of the pile and you brought them back to your car to be opened at home so other cousins or other kids there don't have to get needlessly upset. As far as doing things with your sister and not including your mom, I really want you to think about it this way. There's no way you can do something or say something and guarantee that your mom isn't going to feel a certain way about it. There's no way you can leave her out so delicately and so carefully that she isn't mad about it. Her being mad about it just isn't a reason not to do it. You can be loving and compassionate in your limit setting. Remember the Loving Limits episode that I did. That was episode 14 for anyone who needs to go back and give that a listen. But you can set a limit with love. You can recognize that it's going to feel all sorts of weird in your belly to make a decision that you know is going to upset her. Here's where you tune into the experience you want to have. You tune into how it feels to have it be just you, your sister, and all the kids. That's a really special memory. I love times when it's just me and my sister. They really are meaningful. And they create different kinds of memories than if the rest of the family was there. The more you learn to choose you, the more you learn to do what you want, even though it makes your mom unhappy, the less weird in your belly you're going to feel about it because your trauma brain will start to create new associations with doing things your mom wouldn't necessarily approve of. So instead of tuning into leaving your mom out and feeling anxious, your brain is going to start to remember how free and spontaneous it felt when it was just you and your sister. What does a living limit look like or sound like here? Try this. First, one option, (laughs) shocker, is to not tell her to just get together with your sister. And when your mom asks about it, you say, yeah, we had such a great sisters and cousins day. It was a lot of fun. Here's a picture. When she asks why she wasn't included, you say, it was just sisters and cousins is all. And if she acknowledges disappointment, expresses disdain or judgment, you just say, I know you want to be with us all the time, mom. Saturday was just for us girls, but we're all together now. Or if you feel like she does need the heads up, just include your plans in conversation. You don't want to have to set up the conversation in such a way where you're seemingly asking her for permission or asking her if it's okay, you're not doing the whole, hey, mom, we need to have a talk talk. You're simply saying, oh, I can't do lunch next week. It's Sisters and Cousins Day. And if she expresses disappointment at not being included, you're saying, I know you always want to be us. Thank you so much for that. But we wanted a day just for us. So we're taking one. We'll see you next week, though. You don't want to apologize. You don't want to show remorse. And you don't want to yield into the guilt tripping. You just acknowledge her feelings with a, I know you don't understand. Or I know you want to be there, too. We've made this decision. And as I said at the beginning, there's no way I could possibly cover all of the scenarios that a narcissist could possibly put in front of you during the holidays. 
It is my hope, though, with this episode that I've offered you ways of thinking about this, ways of communicating your limits, your needs, your preferences, and your boundaries. I'm definitely going to be including those journal questions in the show notes for all of you, too, if you weren't able to grab them while I was talking to you. But thinking ahead of of this time of year for yourselves, it's going to let you get in the driver's seat of your holiday decision making. You're going to feel more in control of it. You're going to feel prepared. You're going to feel like you have a plan. We know that the only thing we can predict about narcissists is that they're wildly unpredictable. But if you can prepare yourselves for the kind of thinking I'm challenging you to do, I think you will find those what the fuck am I supposed to say moments a little bit easier to navigate. This is not easy. All of you are muddling through. And I really, really hope that this helps. Next week, we're getting tactile here. We're going to be doing a skill building episode. A listener has asked me, how do I respond when my mom is outright antagonizing me or just baiting me for a reaction? How do I react to her without giving her what she wants, which is that reaction? This is going to be concrete and specific. And again, just like this week, I want to start teaching you how to think about these interactions just as much as I want you to be thinking about the things you can say. That's what we're digging into next week. Stay tuned. Thanks all of you for listening. And thanks especially to the ladies who contributed to today's show. All of you are in a community with women around the world right now who are all managing this really super tricky time of year. I'm in it with you too. Bye for now. I'm so grateful that you're here. You're right where you're supposed to be. At its heart, I'm hoping to use this show to build a community of women working together to heal from childhoods marked by maternal narcissism and emotional neglect. My goal for Mother Mayhem is that this show becomes an advice and mentoring-driven show where you share your questions, struggles, and stories, and I offer you direction for healing and recovery. That can't happen without your contributions. I invite you to send a recorded voice memo or write in an email with your questions and things you're struggling with. You can always find me over at heather at daughtersnpd.com. To connect further, I invite you to find me over at Instagram and occasionally on TikTok at daughtersnpd. If you know another woman who needs this conversation in her life, I'm going to ask that you share the show with her. You can help me get the word out with your reviews and social shares of the show and I hope you'll consider doing so. Special thanks to Heather Clark for editing this show. She's in my head and knows what I meant to say when the words come out backwards. Thanks for your time today. I'm always in it with you. Bye for now.